welcome welcome back to another i'm calling this here's what i'm calling it mark mm. and, and this is probably going to change over time here we're calling it the breaking wordpress episode technically I'm not supposed to use the word wordpress in a commercial endeavor uh so we'll just maybe use it for this <laughs> this particular live stream temporary uh, temporary breaking wordpress episode one mark joined us week and a half ish ago uh we were sort of he and i talking to uh make this a more uh, recurring thing getting mark's perspectives uh, again I, I keep saying like as a newcomer into the space even though you're not really a newcomer into the space but you're learning some things especially through wordpress slack and i, I love seeing it i love yeah. seeing you get involved i love seeing you talking to people because it's healthy and uh, i'm interested to get your perspective in all of this stuff so we're calling it breaking wordpress for now we also have some breaking news coincidentally oh, yeah. which is fun um as always, the WPMinute.com, your favorite five minutes of WordPress news goes out every either Thursday or Friday, depending on my workload. The WPMinute.com slash subscribe. Mark, where do you want folks to go to check stuff out that you got going on? Yeah, I appreciate the intro there, Matt. Um, yeah, you can find me um, on YouTube. If you just type in Mark Samansky, it's tough to spell. S-Z-Y-M-A-N-S-K-I. Or if you just type in MJS.bio, that's uh, kind of like a link, kind of like a links page for me. You can see all my socials and everything I got going on there. Um, but yeah. Fantastic stuff. The WP Minute is brought to you by some fantastic sponsors, uh, especially our pillar sponsors, Bluehost, Pressable, and OmniSend. Check out the WPMinute.com slash sponsors. What's, what's happened in your world since the last time you and I chatted? Anything fun? Anything exciting? Client proje uh, projects? Anything new in the pipeline? Um, yeah, I work on a couple things. Uh, finished up some projects. A lot of the stuff's internal, though, too. Trying to re... I'm going through, as we talked about on some other episodes and stuff like that um you know in the podcast episode kind of in a transitionary period you know kind of getting involved in the, in the wordpress community changing tools from elementor to brick so i just have a lot of things going on at the agency level and then also the you know the content side of it so that's been a, a big focus of mine uh still doing obviously the agency stuff and, and scaling that but um nothing super crazy i mean i would say most of it just comes from the stuff that i the community you know the, the things that we that i've experienced here in the all the news, you know, and the, and the different perspectives and everything like that. It's been very, I'm, I'm a person that really likes to dig deep and, and learn more. And it's, it's been, uh, it's been entertaining and fun. So. Elliot says my volume is low. It's because I just lowered it <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I was doing a recording something else. Test one, test two. Did that change it at all? Let me just go into uh vocaster. Bump, it's breaking. Bump, this bump, a, bump, this bump, 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 bump. Impromptu stream. That's yes. All right, I'm going to bump that up a little bit. Uh, I, I also switched my mic interface because uh, I swapped my desk around, and yeah, I wanted some like more you're... real estate on my desk. like you're in a new spot. I'm in a new spot. All it is is the other side. It's just the <laughs> other side is, is, all, is, is all it is. Um, I can hear myself breaking there, too, so let me go Vocaster Hub one more time and just dial it back a touch just a touch okay well that's cool um nice it's it's nice that you know you're still you're still you know working the the agency angle one of the topics that we have today we're going to talk about a bunch of things besides our updates um you sent me a message the other day uh, in our slack and asked about something uh, that i think is very important uh, i'm calling it a I don't know, a referral set of tools, a bundle. I'll let you unpack that. But like, what do you do when you have web hosts, themes, plugins that you use with customers and you're trying to tell customers, okay, here's the goods. This, this is what I use. This is the core tool set I use. Perhaps, you know, maybe you want something else and we can work that out kind of thing. We'll unpack that in a moment. So I'm interested to talk about that. Uh, something that was posted to make.wordpress Slack a uh, uh, blog few hours ago i had my son at the at the doctor's office this morning uh, a media press pool of sorts a media core uh is an interesting conversation from josepha and team that happened in wordpress slack it's still happening in wordpress slack uh, obviously i'm interested in it mark's interested in it mm -hmm. and then maybe if we have time uh by the end of the hour we can talk some wordpress 6.5 stuff some cool. things that you're excited for some things that i'm excited for etc yeah. etc et love it uh, let's talk about this referral set of tools, agency owners, freelancers, 
And maybe I, you sent me an audio message, yeah. which I thought was great because I do audio messages a lot. <laughs> I hate uh, typing. There's so yeah, many. Yeah, I hate typing. <laughs> just explain it through audio. Listen to this. Um, the way that I digested that comment from you is what do I like? How do I re recommend a certain set of plugins, themes, and web hosts and other services? And then maybe how do I make affiliate or referral based business? Like how can I get a little piece of this, but not in a sleazy way. Um, and how can I, how can I make this a scalable thing for my customer? Is that a fair way of, of how you were thinking about it? Or tell me how you were, you were framing this question as an agency owner. For sure. Yeah. I mean, well, affiliate stuff is by no means new. I mean, I've been doing it for a long time with limited success. Cause the thing is with affiliate, you have to have an audience, you have to have people that trust you and you have to not preferably not be selling like garbage, right? Like, I mean, you don't want to be just shilling crap. You want to actually be, you know, I try to do with my content. It's like, I use this every single day. I love it. If you love it, here's an affiliate link. And I even say a lot of times, like if you have some sort of aversion to affiliate link, even though it doesn't cost you anything, you know, some people get upset about that. It's totally fine. Just Google the product and just go buy it. But the idea would be that like, there's a lot of people that are making money off of almost strictly affiliate stuff because they're making com uh, content around it and promoting it. And then every, every single WordPress plugin uh, pretty much nowadays has that. Um, so, I mean, the concept that I was kind of running by you is I get those questions all the time and where it starts to break down for me is I've had the idea forever. Like ever since I started the agency, I'm just so systems oriented that as soon as I started building stuff, I was like, okay, these are the tools that I'm going to use for these certain circumstances. And this is like the package that I have even before I started making content on this channel that I'm now, now on, like I, I just had that idea in mind. So the ultimate question in the discussion is like, what happens the stuff that you use all the time totally makes sense. If anybody's, you know, doesn't want to hear that, that's fine. They could Google or whatever. But like, what happens when you get random people? Like you already have a web host that you're locked in with, you're good and everything like that. And then somebody else says to you, hey, you know, we have a partner program, love to talk to you. And again, I'm not, yeah, I'll talk to anybody, but you know what I mean? Like that's, that, that's where it gets a little, you know, muddy for me is like, I don't, I don't use X, Y, Z, but maybe they are a good product and a fit for some. So like just navigating that is kind of, uh, is, is, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you had any thoughts or if anybody had any thoughts on, on kind of what they would like to see there. Yeah. I mean, I think if you just look at it from a content creator's perspective and you just look at some of our friends and colleagues around the space, uh, you know, I think as a content creator, I don't personally, personally, I don't do it just because I just don't have the, the, the time capacity to like sit right. down and sign up for affiliate programs and or referral programs because there are two different types of things that are out there and then set up a page and then call to actions and, and I, I probably should right it's i'm literally leaving you know potential money on the table um but i also don't position you know myself that way i do sponsorships and memberships and that's just my thing and that's what i like focus on but there's nothing wrong with having a landing page and saying here's my top three themes, here's my top three web host, here's my top three, you know, contact form plugins, because I think once you're in the game long enough, again, this is just my opinion, that you eventually find uh, certain products, certain hosting companies that tailor to certain individuals, right? So it's not just a one size fits all, all plugins and themes and, and hosts kind of roll with that because they're trying to get as much as they possibly can. But I think you could build a strategic landing page that said, look, if you're a, I don't know, a nonprofit, a, a small micro business, maybe this web hosting company is for you. Mm -hmm. If you're a media publisher and you're doing millions of page views a month, maybe this web hosting uh, company is, you know, is for you. Or you're a developer, an agency type, and you need certain things to deploy sites, to manage sites and manage code this web host is perfect for you. And then the same goes for like themes and, and plugins. We kind of talked about this on our last episode where, you know, when I was running my agency, I always had a, here's the affordable option. Like here's the affordable mm -hmm. stack. Not only is it what I will or won't do in the service, but it's this theme, this plugin, it's this price. And it's this price because of this stack. Here you go. Here's what we have to offer you. Or it's custom. And then it's now we can start the building blocks of, of, you know, other pieces of software or other custom code that we're putting on top of this. So I think like WordPress is 
ripe for that kind of like landing page and offering. If you fit the bill, use my referral links. If you don't want to use the referral links, fine. Right. Um, you know, this is why I think it's cool that I don't see this a lot in the WordPress space is to use a coupon code at checkout for other, like if somebody wanted to sponsor you and they're like, Hey, instead of using the referral affiliate link, you know, Mark, then use, you know, Mark 10 at disc at, at yeah. checkout and get 10% off. And then the company would say, okay, Mark has sent us X amount of sales or leads this year, this month. Yeah. You have, you have to do something to incentivize that. people to, to do it too. Like if like, that's, that's the best practice. If I'm a, if I ever become a, you know, a plugin creator or whatever, it's always going to be more like that where <clears throat> maybe you lower, maybe the, the, you know, you lose 10% on the sale and you lose 10% on the affiliate commission, but ultimately it's either that you lose 20% like that kind of, or not even exactly it'd be a different number, but a lot of times like it'll be like 20% straight commission, but the customer doesn't get anything out of it. They just yeah. have to pay full price, which is they're not paying more or anything, but it's just yeah. another incentive to like, Hey, we're giving, you know, this is another way for us to, you know, partner with people and affiliate and, and stuff like that. So I like that coupon code idea for sure. Yeah. I saw somebody in post status, uh, ask yesterday or the day before, I can't remember that they had somebody ask, they had a customer ask them for a pre black Friday sale. <laughs> like we're in March. in March, we're not even, <laughs> you, know, you know, we're not even doing Christmas in July yet. Right. Yeah. And people are asking for black Friday and it's a weird thing. Like the WordPress space is, is weird. This is a topic yeah. onto itself, but so many people just expect discounts. They just expect stuff to be super free. We talked about this with page builders, you mm -hmm. know, in our last discussion is like, there's just this level of expectation in the WordPress space that, uh, from the end user, the consumer, that it's cheap, free, and fast all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a, I think that's an issue. You know, I think that's a, a solid issue. Yeah. I mean, we don't, obviously we talked about it and we could probably talk for an hour on it, but I mean, just at a, just at a high level, you know, I mean, it kind of, kind of slightly, I feel like boils into our conversation about like the open source stuff that we were talking about beforehand. And we'll talk about here is like, I don't know, again, I, everything that comes out of my mouth currently is I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of like, like you said, like a newcomer early to the game. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you guys and I'm just trying to provide a, a fresh perspective, but yeah, I mean, the open source nature is amazing. And like, everybody thinks of like, Oh, isn't WordPress like free and everything. It's like, yeah, but everything's free. I mean, you could just build, you know, your own website basically for free with just, if you know how to code, but it's like, you're paying for convenience. You're paying for like getting your time back with these plugins and everything like that. Like that is so valuable and everything is so relatively everybody's in a different spot but it's so relatively affordable like nothing's like outrageously priced and you know i mean i like an ltd as much as the next person right <laughs> but at the same time it's like yeah. you know there's it just i don't know you gotta you gotta try to have more of like a longevity business perspective with it and understand that those people are trying to make money just like you're trying to make money you know yeah so, but that's high level uh my good friend sent me a text this morning and he's asking so uh he's asking to build a website. He's starting up, uh, I, I run a nonprofit. Well, he runs the nonprofit. I, I help him on this nonprofit organization that he started, uh, a few months ago. And, uh, so I've built the site in, of course, WordPress cadence, gravity forms, powers, all of our donation forms and all this fun stuff. So like we're ramping up, we're doing the boss marathon, raising money for that right now. So we have like a special landing page for that. And, uh, he, we're, we're doing a, a golf tournament in July. So I'm going to be building all that stuff out, but he, he wants to build one for his, this other thing that he wants to start. And he was sending me a text message. He's like, Hey, I, you know, he's, he's technical, but he's not like, yeah, I couldn't give him WordPress and be like, here you go. Like he asked me, right. he's like, Hey man, I'll, I'll update the WordPress site for you. So you don't have to do it. Like, especially when we're doing, you know, a bunch of events, it's just a lot of work on the back end. He's like, oh, I'll do it. I'm like, no, <laughs> because mm -hmm. if you do it, number one, we're going to break stuff and it's going to cause more work for me. And two, it's just like, man, I'm just not ready to, in the, the few hours that I have left to dedicate to this, to start educating you on how to properly like make a page, bring in a block, you yeah. know, insert a form. There's a lot there. So he's asking me, Hey, where can I go to build a, build a website easily? I kind of want to learn this stuff. So now I'm at like this crossroads, like, well, the easiest place is like Wix or Squarespace, but you're not going to learn anything there. Yeah. You're just, you're just going to learn how to do a Wix in a Squarespace site. Uh, I, if you really want to learn the web and building a site, you, you know, you should use WordPress. And, um, 
So I'm at that crossroads with him. I don't even know where the hell I was going with that story, but it just yeah. came up because I was thinking of the end user uh, and this expectation of free fast and should be easy, mm. you know, when it isn't. Yeah. It's just not the reality sometimes, a lot of times, really. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about this. Let me pull it up. <clears throat> uh, yeah. This is the breaking part mm -hmm. of the of the show title. I want to literally break WordPress and break <laughs> WordPress at the same time. Uh, all right. Share this over here. So we have... Oh, I forgot to... I also put my second monitor in uh, vertical. Oh, and so now I've got, so I'm totally messed up. Not only have I rearranged my desk, but now it's over here and my mic is in the way. So now I'm already feeling the effects of, you know, doing this stuff. Nice. This Real stuff. quick while you're pulling that up, Eric in the chat, uh, just asked a quick question about the stuff like ACF and CBT. Um, Eric, I would just, I would just say I use jet engine, um, which is great. Cause it's, I mean, again, I have videos on everything like that. Metabox is another one. I know there's another one. ACPT, I want to say. ACF's the godfather, though. I mean, ACF Pro is fantastic. Um, yeah, I'll make more content on that. Let me know what you want to see, and I'll, I'll, t I'll, uh, I'll, I will oblige. All right, so you can go to uh, the make.wordpress.org marketing page. You can read uh, the post by Josepha. Um, I thought this was a Breaking Bad WordPress <laughs> crossover. You know, now that you say that, I yeah, have. I've never my, seen that, but my, I'm Jesse. And... <laughs> my, my, my brain just, this is weird how my brain works. So I, I ran a limited series podcast with somebody, uh, Brian Castle, called Breaking Content. And then I called it Breaking WordPress. It's funny how my brain has absolutely zero creativity. And it's just, <laughs> I'm just reusing titles uh, all over again. Uh, Elliot has a, another great comment. If users want stuff for free, then they shouldn't expect any support. Even support takes time and money. You just can't keep giving for zero. Yeah, I mean, I could go on a, you know, a mm -hmm. philosophical rant about that. But at, at what point... At what point do we blame the consumer for wanting this versus ourselves for not forcing uh, forcing the issue, right? Or, or at least saying, you know, because a lot of, I've interviewed so many plugin developers and theme developers over the years that a lot of them are adverse to like marketing and promotion to begin with. It's just their nature. It's either that they're afraid of it I don't think I'm good at sales, at marketing, at pricing. And there's that weight of that that sits on that type of person because they're, they just want to create stuff, man. They want to create great code, put out a great product, and feel good that they ship something that helps somebody else. But then they lose like that commercial side, which is so important to a sustainable business, right? Yeah. It's, it's no good. Like your product is no good if you can't sustain it. You know, unless you have other means of income, of course, but like if you're trying to make this your mean of means of income, then you have to, you know, get good at that. And it's at minimum, you know, putting a, a solid price point up there. Obviously, it depends on what it is. A lot of people just default to fifty nine dollars. It's like the magical mm -hmm. WordPress plugin price is fifty nine dollars, yeah. seventy nine dollars. I mean, should the base price be one forty nine and then then you just get into the economics, markets, demand, supply, blah, 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 and then the price point and all this stuff. But if people held the line or paid for support, had a, a different level for different levels of support, yeah, there's there's ways to increase it. And um, I forget who I was talking to recently, uh, but we were, you know, talking about launching their their plugin. And, and I think that absolutely you can have a professional services wrapped around your plugin to provide more income. In other words, it's like, here's my $100 plugin, but if you want me to do it, it's $1,000. So $100, do it yourself. $1,000, I come and do it for you. It's just like buying furniture, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, it, or, or a shed, <laughs> right? Because I've been looking at sheds yeah. lately. Here's a shed. Two nine uh, three thousand dollars. You're like, oh wow, that's pretty good. And then you realize it comes in a box, <laughs> <laughs> right? And you have to put it together: nails, <sighs> screws, platform, paint. You know, put the hinges together of the windows and the door. I don't want to do that. 
Yeah. Oh, it's six thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars <laughs> if you want somebody to do it. OK, now I have to scratch my head and say, do I want that? Right. So th it's very common in the real world. I just don't see it as much in the in the so in the WordPress world. Yeah, it's funny, too, from the agency angle. And then you think about it from the plugin angle and kind of all those types of things. And you're talking about, like, is it who's not necessarily blaming somebody, but like, are we are we going to? quote unquote, blame cheap people or whatever, or are we going to take like accountability in the, in the kind of the standards that we've set? And honestly, the, the, the single most biggest lesson that I've learned in running an agency is you have to manage expectations from the get go and every, and every step of the way. And if you don't do that, it doesn't matter if it's agency life or plug in life or whatever it is. If you don't do that, then you're just going to run into problems. So that's why like process and things like that, I, I try to preach it as much as possible. Um, it's never going to be perfect, but you have to you have to keep that in mind because it's just gonna it's just gonna cause cause issues. In the next episode that we do, remind me I'll show you my my one dollar sales pitch that I used to do. It wasn't a sales pitch; it was part of presenting uh, a pitch to a to a customer. But I I used a dollar as an example. We'll we'll talk about that in the next episode. Okay. All right, so we got this link. Uh, Josefa posted it roughly six hours ago. Like I said, I was super busy this morning. Uh, briefly, just read this synopsis here, and then uh, we'll chat about it. So, WP Media Core it has been long the case. Uh, it has long been the case that WordPress' most successful marketing has been chalked up to word of mouth, but our substantial network of WP Media partners has never been included in any definition of that. Hooray! Except mm -hmm. I wasn't listed on the page. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we rely on outlets like WP Tavern, Jukebox, Unrepresented Tech, Do the Woo, Gutenberg's Time, and countless others to get our information to users of every variety. And for all these years, they've had to know the right people and read the right stuff to get accurate and up-to-date information into their content for their audiences. So you, um, Courtney Robertson posted, at least this is how I saw her again, because I was running around this morning. She posted in the WP Minute Slack, hey, Joseph is jumping in in like five minutes. Everybody should come take a look. I presume that's maybe where you saw it. And then you started jumping in and having dialogue. First, let me just talk about this whole like getting involved with WordPress thing before we dissect this. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see you jumping in Slack and chatting with people, um, but still a little chaotic for you. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. organized. Now, were you a Slack user before like joining the WP Minute and, and .org? Like, were you using it often? I've used Slack before. I mean, I'm obviously... I would like to say pretty technical and like pretty, pretty good at like ad adhering and, and, uh, mm. you know, mass, like not mastering, but like getting used to like different UIs and different tools and everything like that. So, I mean, I definitely have Slack experience. It's just like, there's yeah. a lot going on there and I know it's big cause there's a ton of people and there's a lot of automated things, I think, you know, from like GitHub issues and stuff like that. It's not just people all talking in there. Um, so I get it to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, high level there. Yeah. So what does this look like? From a high level, this would mean weekly or bi-weekly media core meetings where qualified media partners would receive highlights on progress towards project goals, a list of upcoming dates to know, and any future items on the horizon that they should keep an eye out for. A qualified media partner. Now look, I don't want to come off as uh, not hyped for something like this. Like, I, I think this is great. Like, you know... It, the, the next thing that .org could do is also recognize what I call WordPress professionals, <laughs> right? Because I think they're just redoing the learning site and the three avatars they came up with were developer, designer, and I think just end user. Uh, I'm sure if Courtney's watching this, she will correct me. Uh, but I think those are like the three channels for learning. And for me, it's like there's a fourth there. There's somebody like me and Mark and that agency owner, that freelancer who is a power user, who is implementing this uh, for uh, for their clients, right? So WordPress implementers, WordPress professionals, interchangeable in my opinion. Um, so I am excited about this. A qualified media partner would have 80% WordPress content. And, and remember, these are high level ideas right now. This is nothing set in stone. Have 80% WordPress content, have high quality journalism and writing, follow WordPress community guidelines, honor embargoes, which is the only real thing I have issue with in all of this. And then, well, maybe et cetera. <laughs> like what else is the et cetera, right? Um, so the work of the Make Marketing team would encompass anyone wanting to participate in this new concept, that contributions are around managing the media room. Uh, I won't read the rest of this. 
Mm -hmm. uh, just focusing on this. So a media partner would have 80% WordPress content. <coughs> Again, knowing that this is just high level stuff, I assume when she wrote this up, she's thinking just specifically like blog and newsletter, you know, do you take into account, you know, YouTube podcasting, uh, TikTok, Instagram, like where else are people creating this content? And are you really setting up a boundary of it has to be 80% WordPress content? Hmm. I'm not, I'm neither for or against this right now. I just consuming yeah. it, um, have a high quality of journalism and writing again, subjective, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to define that. I barely passed high school, <laughs> you know, yet I've been writing a lot for uh, a considerable part of my professional career. Uh, follow WordPress community guidelines. That's cool. And honor embargoes. The embargo part is the one that I'll focus on because um, I just don't know where an embargo exists in an open source world, mm -hmm. right? So if I look at other YouTube channels that, that I watch, primarily, let's say, all these camera review and tech. MKBHD is a good example. MKBHD, right. Um, but there are, I, I don't know, I follow like a dozen other camera mm -hmm. reviewers. Yeah. And Sony, Fuji, Canon, they will have embargoes on talking about products. Right. And you know when the embargo lifts because every freaking YouTuber posts a review of that product. And when I go into my YouTube app, it is 17 reviews of the Fuji X106 that just launched. I think it's mm -hmm. X106. And I know the embargo lifted, but, but that is a traditional privately held or publicly traded company with a product that they don't want people talking about until they are ready to control like the PR and marketing around that launch. It doesn't exist in or shouldn't exist in the WordPress open source world. Am I wrong <clears throat> looking at it like that? I mean, I don't, I don't uh, have any issue with the, the idea of an embargo, just like the concept of an embargo. I think it does make sense in that world. Cause you want to control when that media comes out. Like, you know, if you're talking like private company like that, um, to me, that comes across as I mean, a super high level, but like you're super like early in this idea. That's just an idea thing. But if you had an embargo, I mean, th just logically, forget like technically, but just logically, like I, anybody can go into this Slack that I'm looking at here on the other side of my screen and just, it, you, you don't even have to use WordPress. Like you, you could just create a WordPress account, I'm pretty sure, create the Slack account and then be in here. So anybody could know, like this is fully open to the public because it's open source. So just logically, I don't understand the reason for an embargo. Because anybody could be in here, like literally seeing if I'm understanding correctly this and like all the GitHub like things. And I'm not, and I'm not even the part that I'm still confused at again, because I'm new is how like the actual contribution to WordPress core, is that just anyone randomly? Do you have to get like vetted to do that? Do you have to like join a team? Like I'm not a developer, so I haven't really looked into it, but like, that's another like question now that I'm digging into it, like kind of it's confusing. Because I see like on, you know, specific launch days or beta days and stuff like that. It's like, hey, there's a lot more going on. People are contributing, running tests and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's really cool to see that. It just seems like I don't know how anybody actually can digest any of these things. Maybe it's just because I'm, again, I'm new to it. But like the embargo thing specifically, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how logically that works in this current setup and system. Again, all of this conversation is happening inside the WordPress.org Slack. I encourage you to join there and get uh, involved. Uh, it's in the marketing channel. Courtney in the marketing channel, Courtney Robertson from uh, GoDaddy, uh, also in the WP Minute Slack, I might add. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, I can see the need for security to be embargoed, but are there any other areas that really would benefit? Um, and then I, a slight joke, I think she's thinking like jazzers on release maybe, so like the jazz names, it's sort of this... Uh, mm -hmm you know, longstanding tradition to name WordPress releases after jazz musicians. Um, and then she asked, what would be the worth, what would be worth that exclusivity? Um, are there any historical examples? Um, I was chatting with another person and they were thinking, well, you know, again, this is all high level, maybe big, like big media sites love exclusivity. So giving them exclusivity would be like advan uh, uh, advantageous for them to like cover a particular thing. But at the same time, it's like, well, 
what like <laughs> what would they even like what do you even give access to like it because when i for example wordcamp media partners now anyone who's known me for at least the last five years <laughs> knows that it drives me nuts because it's a whole heck of a lot of work for those of us in WordPress media, which is still mm. loosely defined. Yeah. Um, it's a whole heck of a lot of work for us for very little return, which I guess is the essence of open source, right? right. And like committing to, you know, committing to WordPress, you know, for instance, when you zoom out, uh, when a, a, a miles, a, a major capstone word camp approaches you, they say, Hey, we want whatever, whatever they, they came up with, whatever the volunteers came up with for that particular WordCamp. We want three blog posts, you know, uh, pre WordCamp, during WordCamp, post WordCamp. We want X amount of tweets and social shares. And for all that work, we will give you two free tickets <laughs> yeah. worth a hundred bucks, yeah. uh, and access and a special like media room. And I don't know, but I don't see the value in that because I've had access for over a decade and by access, it's, Hey, Mark, you want to, want to do an interview and tell me about your, <laughs> tell mm -hmm. me about your plugin that you're, yeah. because it's not a private company. It's not a private company. These are folks that are, who are volunteering to WordPress. They are product owners themselves and this open source ecosystem, they see the value in it. So they're building stuff. I'm talking to them. They're giving me the time of day. End of story. I can understand that this, that this kind of concept would come out of a corporate entity like Automatic, because now what you're saying is, well, we'll give you exclusive access to the Automatic contributed folks, like the folks that we're contributing time to, um, will give you access to them. But even that's weird <laughs> because this is an open source project. So that there shouldn't be anything really happening behind the scenes that would be embargoed or, or have like exclusive access to. Yeah, I I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. I might have said in that in that post, but like I'm not the, the part that I'm still confused about is like what are what's our actual goal? Because we're talking a little bit about like the idea and the implementation, but what's our actual goal? I would have to assume that our goal is to just kind of like rein in the marketing in a sense of word of the WordPress project. Mm. Um, I don't know if there's more deeper behind the scenes there at all. Cause I haven't, again, like I don't, I haven't been gone all the way back through the marketing channels and stuff, but like just, just different stuff. I don't, I don't know if there's other things that, you know, have predated this conversation. Um, but if, if that is, or isn't the case, regardless, I think the thing that I'm seeing is like, I'm, I'm not actually seeing like an, an, a goal, like the simplest goal that I could see is just keep, People that are, you know, media outlets, maybe potentially just even YouTube creators or, you know, you know, d platforms like WP Minute, like updated. Um, I think actually Nathan Wrigley put a great comment in there. He was like, the, the problem to paraphrase is like the big problem right now is he just doesn't, there's too many places to go to get information, right? Like, I mean, I'm every day since, you know, you told me to get in this Slack, I'm like, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm looking at these things. I see like, I'm, I'm in like core, core editor marketing outreach. And like every day there's like stuff happening in there and I got to go through and I got to, I got to look at all of them. And again, it's great content, but everything's so, and you have to do it like that because there's different, um, you know, segments there. But I think ultimately the, the minimum viable product to like take a step in the right direction is a weekly press conference, similar to honestly how like, you know, the, almost the, I don't know what the timeline is on like the white house doing the stuff, but like just have like a, and is it called a press secretary? Who's, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Who addresses the, yeah, the press. Like have somebody like that, whoever, I don't know how you delegate that person or whatever, but ultimately something like that, where you have a conversation live where people can ask questions and maybe there's people on the call. If you want to go that far, like there's definitely an audience and there's definitely, you know, possibly, you know, media outlets or something like that, that are asking direct questions that are a little bit more in the know and just be more transparent like that. Because I think if that's all wrapped up, like in a weekly event, as much as it can be, and obviously there would be spatterings of other information coming out here and there, like that would be such a tremendous step forward. And then, and then there's conversations in this thread about like the YouTube channel and, um, you know, the, 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 the changes they're making there and they've had growth to like 30,000 subscribers. But if you look at that YouTube channel, a lot of the content is like content that is, is informative, but like one of the content most recently the past couple of weeks or whatever is like, is like about custom post types. 
And it's like the coding of custom post types, which again, don't get me wrong. You definitely need to have that content somewhere. I just don't think that should live right next to like the main channel or the main marketing channel of, Hey, this is what's going on in WordPress. Like that's not, that's like a, uh, an academy thing or something. That's like, learn how to do this. It's not like, this is what we're innovating on. This is how we're evolving. The reason if, if, if WordPress falls behind or, or at all, or whatever, loses any market share or anything like that, it's specifically because they're being out marketed. It is not because the product or the people or whoever's built, you know, the actual contributors are bad developers or whatever. It is literally just because of like the communication of how good the platform is. Nobody, nobody even questions that, that sees WordPress. It's just, it's such a weird spot for me because I feel like there's just so much opportunity. And that's why I get like passionate about these topics when I see this. Cause I'm like, we just, let's just try to wrangle that in a little bit. That's almost like the most important part in a way. So Mike Anders, Michael Anderson says bricks is like web flow for WordPress. Tired of waiting for Guten slow to get the basic stuff in the editor. Oh, come on, Michael <laughs> Guten slow. If I had my, I just took out my road. Mm -hmm. Procaster, I would have pressed the uh, the old drum, the old drum <laughs> joke button. Um, so <sighs> WordPress marketing, another you know, highly debated topic in <laughs> you know in yeah. WordPress. Um, you know the marketing team has had uh, you know again I don't um, I don't want to define a lot you know again volunteers these are folks that are just you know putting rolling another up big part of it yeah, yeah and putting up putting their time is like there's only so much you can do it's not like there's a marketing budget hmm. uh where you're spending money on on doing these things and and again work you don't see a wordpress super bowl ad except for matt mullenweg hanging out of a booth uh at the last uh super bowl they're not spending whatever the number is for one minute ad like Wix and Squarespace, millions of dollars for that run. You don't see that. They don't need it. Hmm. They will eventually, maybe, but they don't need to spend it like the Wixes and the Squarespaces of the world. Um, I think Wix hired Kevin Hart a few years ago to do a Super Bowl ad, something like that. <clears throat> um, so, you know, it's been a challenge. It's been an uphill challenge for a while. Here's how I, I've just been dissecting this or deconstructing it and just witnessing things over the last couple of months i've seen a lot of nick diego rich Tabor, and mccarthy who i have her article mm -hmm. pulled up right here um i see a lot of automaticians doing more what i would call uh creator-based marketing like if you and i were showing something off like we have our youtube channels we do tutorials mm -hmm. and I want somebody to sign up to my newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. I do it because I want to grow the audience to sign up for my newsletter, to get WordPress media out, to get more sponsorships. That's the business that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, you might be in the business to grow awareness, to get people to hire you to do services work. Somebody else might be doing it to grow affiliate sales, right? Mm -hmm. But what I've seen and witnessed is some key automaticians who are you know, leading some of the more uh, front end facing features of WordPress showcasing this stuff and making it more attractive as if they were a solo creator. Um, Mike from, uh, his name is Mike, I think it's first Mike or Mark from Jetpack has been doing a lot of creator stuff on his own to, I think, showcase uh, the Jetpack creator side of things. So it's cool to see that stuff. And I'm wondering if this is an, an, this is an initiative really born out of the automatic side to say, hey, finally, we've realized that the creators in this space <laughs> are the people that the vast majority are listening to. And now we want to, you know, seize the moment and sort of make it more official. Yeah. I'm a 100% on board with that. Finally, some recognition. Um, but it's also this, it's also it should be an initiative for folks like you who have always been wondering where the heck do I just, I just want to focus in on one place to see all the updates. And I brought up Ann McCarthy's post here where sort of tongue in cheek, the name of it is WordPress 6.5 source of truth. She's done it since 6.2, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4. I also find it kind of odd that, you know, one of the key uh, contributors to this project is titling something source of truth on her blog. Um, yeah. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like, it's, but it's not a big deal. 
But the point is, is this stuff is all over the place that it's even on contributors' own personal blogs. And there's nothing wrong with this. this is a massively in-depth article to what's coming to 6.5. And this should be on primary WordPress. And she even gives a, a reason for it. Um, but, you know, the, the idea that it's more centralized and more communicated, I'm down with that. I'm not down with like access and embargoes and we'll create a, somebody had recommended like spinning up like a private Slack channel for just the WordPress media people. Like why? It just, just flies against the face of, of open source in my opinion. Uh, a lot of thoughts there. Um, where to begin? The one thing that I had was uh, you were talking about kind of uh, not necessarily, but like, like people going migrating more to creators because you know they they see people on youtube or whatever talking about wordpress and then they they establish that relationship you know almost a little bit and then it's like hey this person is in the know they're following it more than i am i'm going to get some news from them. i don't i think that that is na extremely natural i think that's the way that almost the world's going in every industry people people generally relate I've, i learned this after a lot of playing around and a lot of like just observing other people, people really connect with other people way more than they connect with like brands. And I don't mean to say like, you can't have a brand. I'm just saying that like, if it's one person, this is why I think it's, it would be so powerful if we had like a face of WordPress. Again, it, it's not easy to implement that, but I'm saying like a spokesperson, right. That, that is just delivering that information. It could be multiple people too. But like, if you, if you knew like there was like kind of like somebody every week, that was like, you know, again, the press secretary of WordPress for this time that was delivering that message and speaking on it as much as they could with other people asking questions and things. I think it's just like you become to know that the, pr the platform through a person you associate it with that. Um, just an idea. Again, there's probably holes in that. But, but um, you know, that coupled with this, this marketing idea and this marketing push. I don't think it's about access. I think it's about a centralized place to do it. And Anne is fantastic. That hallway hangout, I saw it last month. I don't know if she or somebody else is putting on a new one. I have it on my calendar for, I think, next week, um, I believe. Okay. Like Those types of conversations are so, so good. I Maybe I'm in the minority, but you know, I know Peter is in here, and he, he made a comment about like the Slack. Like it is so difficult to like try to go through all that and understand. I'm not saying we should just give her Slack. I'm just saying there right. needs to be a, a way that like, the stuff can get can get um kind of like filtered and spoken in a like a, a one again a weekly meeting or something like that that is more digestible for somebody that's not actively contributing has to see every single line of whatever is going on there and then you can always pop in there to see more context like in in because you're not going to get this if WordPress is going to literally be for everybody, you need to somehow like market it in that way where other people can digest this stuff. Like you and I, like we're in here and it's like, we can, we understand what's going on. We can hear the conversations. We can, we can talk about it, but like, that's, that's not for everyone. I mean, like, why would everyone want to be in that Slack? That's not, that's not what it is. There needs to be something that's more like front facing in a way, even though I understand the core of this project is different than like an actual product. There's still gotta be some things we can kind of like pull from there. And I don't, I'm not saying this is, these are easy questions, but I'm saying like, if this is what it is and we see problems, let's like, you know, kind of maybe, you know, any way I can help too, I'm, you know, let me know. But yeah, the, one of the issues, and this is the issue that any WordPress creator faces. And, and I've talked this, oh, about this a, a zillion times um, about WordPress media, the value of WordPress media, especially WordPress news. Nobody cares about WordPress news. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'm a guy who publishes a WordPress news newsletter. Nobody cares. And when I say nobody cares, I say the peak amount of people in the entire, on the entire earth mm -hmm. is 10,000 English speaking people on earth that care. Define, about, word, define uh, WordPress news though. Exactly. So WordPress news is what you and I are talking about right now. Mm -hmm. The make team, uh, a potential WordPress media core, um, what's going into WordPress 6.5 in terms of features and how that relates to end users, the business of, you know, what's happening in the industry, what Matt Mullenweg's up to, the dynamic of automatic versus WordPress.org, uh, WordPress.org responsibility of the open web, how AI plays into the future of WordPress. Very few people care about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Flip that to how do I make a landing page with Gutenberg? 
How do I design a, uh, an animation with Elementor? How do I make a, profi uh, an efficient web stack with, with bricks, mm -hmm. right? Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people care. I mean, look at the growth of WP Beginner and, and our colleagues who have other, you know, large um, half million subscriber uh, uh, YouTube channels covering how to, how to design things with WordPress or other softwares, right? Massive audience, that's a, a big audience. Mm -hmm. The people who actually care about what's happening to WordPress, very little. If I look back at my agency career and I ask the 500 clients that I serviced over that time, probably more, do, do you care yeah. <laughs> about what's coming next? No, they don't, uh, which is why I created the WP Minute to make a five minute micro dose of WordPress news because maybe, just maybe, you'll listen to five minutes about what's happening to WordPress, right? And I think that is just one of the inherent issues. If you talk about development in WordPress, massive audience. If I tweet it out, Mark and I talk about, you know, Mark and I talk, well, maybe this would work. Mark and I talk about the struggles of Gutenberg versus Nick Diego showing you how to work with the API, uh, interactivity API. Mm -hmm. Thousands of people are <laughs> gonna be yeah. like, show me how to do this interactive API because most of the audience who cares about this stuff they just love it for the code and the development, right? And then somebody comes along who wants to analyze this space. Eh, you again? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, the, it's not really pushback, but the only thing that I would that I would say kind of in tandem to that would be that, you know, if we look at these other players that are gaining, and I know, again, I know they're private, but like, you know, Webflow and Squarespace and Shopify and Wix, I mean, they are like, if you ask most WordPress people, they're going to be like, well, those platforms are doing like, you know, like they're, they're making, they're making web development almost feel like, like a game almost like kind of like, like there's like some sort of like sexiness to it and, and all that. And they're making it seem so simple, so easy for like the common person. And I'm not certain that that's like the way to go, but there is definitely something to kind of like take from that because you look at like, again, I'm not saying that WordPress needs to copy this. I'm just saying like, you look at a, a commercial you know, even in front of a YouTube video for like, like on our videos, like it'll be like Wix ads and it'll be like somebody making it seem like really easy to build a website, da, 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 whatever. My question would be, and I don't know the answer is, do those ads target and solicit a response from people that actually want to build their own website? Or do those ads also solicit a response from, or elicit whatever, a response from somebody that it, that needs a website built for them. And then they think, oh wow, Wix is the platform. I'm going to find somebody that builds on Wix. Because if that's if that happens at all, then WordPress could also do that, could also kind of pull from that a little bit. If we make it seem like <coughs> it's a different type of platform, but I, I think it's missing a little bit of that, like that that again, that I don't know a better word to use it, that, that like like the sexiness of it. There's no, there's no like marketing around <laughs> that piece of it to bring people in. Because once you're in, then you're you you should probably care. You know what I mean? This is the thing that's really interesting to me, is there's a lot of people that probably watch my videos, your videos, or whatever, and like they don't know this stuff. Now you tell me to go in this Slack and I look at this, I'm like, okay, this is a little interesting. Now that like I'm seeing under the hood of everything that's going on and I have yeah. these opinions now. And it's like, if you're building a agency on this or if you're building a plugin on this, like you, you should probably some a little bit care about the platform that's actually there. And maybe that's how we funnel people into the, the news space and like the actual, that piece of it still not going to be a hundred percent of people that care, but I'm just saying like, I think that it's more of a holistic thing where you kind of bring people into the ecosystem with like the shiny thing almost. And then there's more to it. Like kind of like you're saying. So that's why I love talking to Mark. He's young. Mm -hmm. He's optimistic. <laughs> he sounds like me, you, yeah. know, you know, 15 years ago. Um, yeah. Wix and Squarespace. Yeah, great. So if you ever analyze their, their marketing, it has nothing to do about building a website. It is just about you are, a uh, yoga instructor and you want to sell, uh, you want to have your, uh, yoga classes, sell your yoga classes. Yeah. You're an artist. You want to sell art. You're uh, a florist. You want to sell flowers. They're showing you how to do these things in the commercial. It has nothing to do about, Hey, look how fast Wix or Squarespace is. It all has to, you have a problem. We're going to solve it for you use this platform because mm -hmm. the inverse is WordPress, which is the why it works so well 
is because there are hundreds of thousands of folks like you and me who are who don't want to use those platforms who want to run a services agency and we want to learn how to build this stuff on our own in this open source world so the marketing is towards hey look how fast and cool mm -hmm. this software is and look what you can yeah. do with it and you can automate and you can unlock and you can database and you can caching and you can php and you can javascript oh my god look how great this is it is very much designed for us and mm -hmm. that's the problem <laughs> that you know this whole endeavor that we're on is to try to get that end user to say, oh, you know what, I don't want to use Wix or Squarespace. I do want to use WordPress because I should care that it's open source and I can control it. Um, you know, so that's what we're up against. And and largely, when you look at, and I'm 100% with you, the last time I interviewed Mullenweg a couple of years ago, you know, I, I said that what, what what we need is that face. We need that product person to to lead the product to be the face of the product and and to come out there and i think that we're starting to see that more now in the state of the words words uh, state of the word events yeah. um but primarily that was him and i you know i don't know if we're ever going to decouple that but like state of the word has always been like him and the direction and the thought process and giving us that apple-esque type of of mm -hmm. event and you know then from there it's, Josepha should be the you know the next person in line, and then you can kind of trickle it down to the the sergeants of the of the Gutenberg project and so on and so forth. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I would say that it would be great to have that kind of of presence. Though I just don't know if you can do it in an open source world. You know, I, I think in a private company it works. Like if you looked at Shopify and compared the Shopify marketing, it is you see human beings. Mm -hmm. Right, you see the CEO, you hear the CTO talk about their technology and their stack and their enterprise and how they solve. So WordPress.com doesn't even give you that, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which is like uber surprising, um, you know, for many reasons. But I don't know if we'll ever get there. I, I think it, we should, but I don't know if we can. It's another one of those parallels, though, that I would say is kind of really interesting because it's like the answer at least one of the answers or the option is like right underneath our noses, especially if you're from the agency world, or if you've ever tried to do that, right? Like I was watching a video um, by Lee Blue the other day, and he was saying that um, you know, the old agency model is kind of dying a little bit because there's no need for it anymore. Before you could sell the implementation because it was so difficult. Like there was no encapsulation like there was with Wix and Squarespace and, and you know, even Gutenberg and stuff like that now. But now you can't just, it's very difficult for me to go up to somebody and say like, hey, I'll build you a website and for five thousand, ten thousand dollars when they know that they could go because they've seen thirty thousand Wix ads and they know they can pay thirty nine dollars a month or whatever and just do it themselves. Obviously, we know there's a deeper conversation there and there's there's more value you're providing, but you have to transition from I'm gonna build you a website to, like you said, I'm gonna solve your problem. I'm gonna get you results. And that I feel like is one of the avenues that potentially a marketing you know, campaign that WordPress could do is like, yeah, we're going to get you results and we're going to get you results. Like we can get you results like way more ways than these other platforms can, because the, the, and honestly, I think if, if WordPress ever did a, an actual campaign, like I'm not, it's not familiar if they have or not. I think a really, really probably the key factor is just the amount of people that know WordPress and the amount of people that are in the community, as opposed to like, not just what the platform can do, but how many people know how to use the platform and have, have experience with it. It's like, you're not, you're not just like getting into the WordPress ecosystem. You can like, as a business owner should feel so, uh, re like relieved and comfortable knowing the fact that so many people know how to use this platform and a, and a lot of them know how to use it very well. And there's different tools depending on what you need to do. I don't know how you, I don't know how exactly you'd put that together. Um, I'd be willing to think about it more, but that's, that's kind of where it is. And again, it starts from that funneling of like trying to actually make it a little more, I feel like cohesive all in one spot without, you know, the, the gates and without putting up walls somehow with the access stuff. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just, I'm interested to see more on this, on this idea, you know, the media corpse idea and see how it kind of evolves and what the actual details would be as they, uh, as they move forward with it. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, again, Hey, I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm excited to see it take shape. I just, um, yeah. you know, want to see how it all uh, evolves in terms of uh, access and 
all that fun stuff. Let's uh, let's wrap it up as we get to the top of the hour here. Anything uh, excited? Anything you're excited about in WordPress 6.5? I'll go first. Fonts. Oh. <laughs> That's what I got. Uh, WordPress 6.5 fonts. I know everyone is also excited about uh, uh, the block. I'm going to forget the name of it right now. I just had the source of truth in front of me. Uh, mm. What is it called? It is called something something blocks. I know it's for custom fields in the future. Ba, ba, ba. Robust. The bindings API, the block bindings API, another consumer friendly feature. <laughs> <laughs> um, fonts really is what I got. And uh, the new sort of UI for uh, patterns in the site editor, uh, which is just a small seed of what the WordPress admin will look like in the future. Yeah. I mean, I definitely haven't probably taken as much of a look at it as I should have, um, but I did see your you made a recent video on that, didn't you? And then uh, I and then will be I'll... doing a six point five stuff. Yeah, and so. then, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, just in general, I love the, I love the. Again, I'm, I'm always rooting for it, no matter if I ever sound critical of it. I'm always rooting for it because if you're not rooting for WordPress and you're using WordPress, that just doesn't make any sense. So, um, but yeah, I love to see the font, um, you know, the, the font library and everything like that. They're kind of supporting there, um, and uh, I'm excited because. I'm not familiar with, I don't know if there was anything specific with patterns and everything like that, but that is just, just kind of looking at it holistically over the past couple, um, you know, releases and everything like that. And as Gutenberg's continued to ramp up, that is something that like, I wish bricks even had like bricks is not like the, the term over there is components. And then partially sync patterns is kind of, they're kind of like the same concept. That's like a fantastic feature. Like that, that, that helps in so many different ways. Um, I definitely think I saw a video that you had about, uh, patterns there at some yeah, point. That, yeah. Yeah. When it was when it was first announced, the pattern overrides. Uh, yeah. But now they're they're pulling that out uh, to to think about it a little bit more. Okay. Well, why is it so important for you on the brick side? Well, it's important because like just certain aspects of the website, um, and I could basically when when I'm building a WordPress website, I want to do as little repetitive work as possible, and as really as little work as possible. But what I mean by that is like, I want to I want to basically have the website as templated as I can. So like your homepage will pretty much be somewhat custom. I mean, obviously, you'll bring in like certain things. And you know, we can talk about classes and all that. But a lot of the parts, and I'm probably not telling you anything new, like a lot of the parts of a WordPress website, because of the, the structure part of it, the CMS part is the next next be best in class, right? When you're when you're building like custom post types and all that, those like your services archive could be completely templated. So you never have to really touch it. You design it one time. When you add a new service, it goes in perfectly as you'd want. Um, you know, when you when you add a new service and then you want to have a service page, like you know, I don't know, like web design or whatever sl services slash web design, that page could be perfectly templated. So every one of your services or what have you, just like a blog post template, same you know, same thing. So my my point being is like. That's the template portion, but what I've even been, my eyes have been open to is components, which are pieces of the template. So a thing that I run into all the time is like, I want my header or my, not my header, but my heading, my like first part, my hero section to be the same across all different uh, uh, pages and templates and everything like that. But because I'm dealing with different templates, you can't really do that well. So you have to almost take like, we'll call it a section, put that into a template. And again, that's, that's something that I feel like Gutenberg is already implementing and like i don't know how they got to the forefront of that but I'm, I'm happy for it because that's something that's super impactful and super efficient like it's way more maintainable and scalable when you're when you're actually developing so um love that absolutely love that <laughs> new wordpress cheerleader michael anderson says yippee reminds me of the iphone slow dripping of basic stuff and, and others <laughs> Uh, already have, but yeah, it's good to be able to change fonts. Uh, what we need is global styles per page. I just did a video about the global block styles. That was it. That was what I saw. Um, which is pretty cool. Like it's, you know, uh, I, I think that's really powerful. You, you're, you're changing the style of, of the predetermined block buttons, for example, is something that is just like very common. Uh, if you, if you, you know, a lot of people don't like the rounded style that ships with say 2024, uh, you know, the rounded corners on like the photos and the overall aesthetic. And if you want to change it to, uh, something that's a little bit more, uh, 
square it's the best mm. word i got for you right now yeah. uh is you know is is changing those blocks and uh that's pretty cool and you know, it's going to get better it's just taking some time good things do take time yeah i mean 10 I years know. according to 10 years according to matt you know i don't know it's I, I'm, I'm happy it's moving in the right direction um obviously everybody wants everything to go faster but there's there's yeah it's not it's not always possible there's there's uh ton of bottlenecks in every project and everything like that. Um, but yeah, again, I just want to echo that, you know, I think it's, I speak for Matt as well. Like I just want to see the thing continue to get better. And if there's any, if there's ever anything that sounds critical that comes out of my channel or on these live streams or anything, it's just cause like, I literally wanted to see it get better and I just have opinions and try to share them as much as possible. So. I'm going to play you out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play you out, throw in some music. I'm going to wrap it up. We're 20, 50 seconds over the hour. Uh, everybody. Thanks for hanging out today. Uh, the wpminute.com slash subscribe. Join that newsletter, your favorite five minutes of WordPress news every week. Mark, where do you want people to go? You just uh, go to mjs.bio. It's my little link section. You can see everything I got going on there. Um, I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you so much for having me as always, man. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you, uh, see you in the next episode.